Hello everyone and welcome to another scrapbook layout process. Today I'm going to be doing a 12 by 12 double page spread and I'm using the Honey Butter bulk paper. And the layout that I'm going to do today is a quite a simple sort of design, but I have a couple of tricks on how to put it together. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the zip strip. I may be using this zip strip later on, I'm not too sure, I'll just keep this off to the side. And I'm going to work with some triangles. So what I want to do is use my Versamat to mark where my triangle is going to be. Rather than cutting a square and then cutting them into triangles like that, I want to cut the triangles off each edge of the paper and I want to make sure that they're going to be all equal in size. So I'm just going to line this up on my Versamat and mark at the six inch mark for each side. And my idea is I'm gonna frame one side with triangles and the other side I'm going to use what's left over. So I need to just put this into my trimmer and line up the two areas here that meet the edge and slice. And then I'm going to rotate and do exactly the same thing. And I'm going to be doing more cuts into these triangles just to give a little bit of variety to the layout rather than just having this side of the paper showing in each corner. So I just need to keep going around and doing this until I get all four. And I do love the Fiskars trimmer with this wire here because it shows exactly where that is going to cut. So I know that I'm going to get the right cut each time. Now this one looks a little bit funny because when you turn it around, you're gonna end up with a square on this side. But I still want this same triangle. This is gonna work out to be exactly the same size as the other ones. And then I just need to rub away my pencil lines here. And what I'm going to do is take each of these triangles and cut half an inch off the edge. So I can use my trimmer to line this up and I'm going to do that for each of these pieces. And that way I can flip this over and use the other side, which is the butterflies. Or if I wanted to, I could have it so that it is the butterflies on one side and the dots on the other. But I think what I'm gonna do is have the yellow dots as the main triangle piece and use the butterflies as the trim. So I need to do that for all four pieces. So I've got my four triangles done. I'm also going to do the same thing to this rectangle piece, but instead of cutting half an inch around all four sides, I'm only going to do two, and I'm gonna make sure that I do the two cuts on the same edge. So I'm not gonna do half an inch on this edge and then rotate it and do this one. I'm gonna do half an inch. I can actually go up to the top here and do my half inch. And then I'm going to flip this all the way around so the half inch is taken off the other side. Now I know this is going to give me a rectangle rather than a proper square, but that's all going to work out when I adhere things down onto the layout. So I'm just gonna keep those pieces together and put them aside for now. And then I'll do a dry fit. So I'm building onto white daisy cardstock. So the left page is going to have these triangle pieces with a finishing trim to them and the angles all work perfectly because of the way that I prepped this and cut it. So each of these go into each corner. Now I just want to see what this looks like just in case I do change my mind. I can rotate this and have the butterflies showing and have the yellow dots on the other side as the little piece of trim. So there are options when you do something like this. You can always reverse the paper around the other way, but I think I'm just going to go with the yellow dots. This is actually honey butter, the color. I really love how this looks. It's a lovely frame for photos. And then for this side, what I'm gonna do is actually adhere these first. So I'm going to go from six to six inches. And then this one will butt up against here. And this should, these little tips here, should go from six to six inches again. It's not quite a whole mirror image of this with the butterflies going around each side, but that's okay because I'm going to put some photos on this page and a title. But as long as you put the first piece down at this six inch mark here, and the six inch mark here, this is the half inch strip that we cut off. Then you can line this up. Obviously this way won't work, but you need to line up the edge where you cut this strip from and you can adhere that down. And then you can line up this other one so that it's right up against 
this yellow piece here. It's an easy cut to do, but it gives some really good end results. So I'm going to adhere all of this together and then we're going to be bringing in all of the little decorative pieces that I'm going to add to this. Everything's all adhered down. So now I'm going to play with my photo placements. I have got them mounted onto glacy cardstock. I've used the light side and all the photo mats are true sizes. So they're four by six or three by four inches. And then I'll be trimming my photos down to fit within this. I might even trim them down a little bit more so this white will provide a border as well. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do for this side is have my larger photos here. I might bump that one up a bit because I think I'm gonna put a little journal box down in this section. And on this side, I'm going to do four by fours. I'm going to do them in somewhat of a grid pattern like this, I think. So when I'm lining these photos up, I'm making sort of a grid style, but it's an offset grid style because I'm bringing in this landscape three by four to nestle into this area here. And then I'll bring this one in to nestle as well. The other option you could do is have it so that it is a proper square and then you could put a little embellishment into this centerpiece. I think what I'm going to do is have these like this and then I'm going to bring in some of the cuts that I've made. Now I have created a title and originally I was going to do it with glacier and then honey butter and I've got all my white letters here as well and put that on top but I don't really like the glacier and the honey butter together and I created this title in Cricut. So I used the text feature and did the 100% cute and I used KG Strawberry Limeade as my font and then I used the offset feature to give me the offset for the honey butter and then I used the offset feature again to give me the big piece behind that and then I hid all the contours. But I don't particularly love this color combination. Sometimes what I think is going to work when I go to put it down on a page, it doesn't work quite as well as I thought it was going to. So I'm thinking this might be a better fit. So I've got 100% cute with my white piece and I left these all on the mat so I wouldn't lose any of the pieces. And already I know this is the way I wanna go. It's a lot fresher, it's a lot crisper. And I think this looks a lot better than the other combination I had. I'm gonna leave these letters on my mat here so that I can adhere all these and not lose anything. And the other item I'm gonna bring in are some of these cone flowers. I absolutely love these. And they are from the Honey Bunny Digital Artwork Collection. And cone flowers, I just think are absolutely lovely. So I have put some of these together and I've already done the blending on some of these shapes. And I'll put a link to a video at the end of this video and in the description below showing how I've shaded these. But I'll just run through it quickly with you. The base layer has been cut in sage and I've inked some pine ink onto it. The next layer is mocha cardstock and I've just used a gold gel pen to do the little dots here. This is actually flipped over. That's the right side. I was thinking it was a bit pale. So now you can see my pine inking onto here and then I've got my mocha piece there. And then I've used honey butter and I've done some ink blending with this and I've just used sun dance ink and I've started off the edge and come up with my blending brush and then faded it out. I haven't even come all the way to the top. I wanted the darker piece of the ink blending to be at the bottom part of the petals. And pine was the other one I used with the sage cardstock and I just brought a little bit onto the bottom part of the leaves here. So they will all stick together like that. And you can see I've done some splatters here. On the video that I will link to, I actually used a clear shimmer brush. But for these ones, to get even more of a sparkle, I've used the Zurataki Starry Colors and I've used the white one here. And of course, my fan brush. So you just spray a little bit of water into the inkwell. I'll just take this out. So you can just spray a little bit of water into there and then you can puddle that up and do some splashes onto there. And I love the starry colors and they don't rub off at all. So this isn't gonna come off. Sometimes shimmer brush does come off when you touch the elements. But I love how with these type of watercolor paints, that shimmer and shine will stay there. So I just need to adhere this one together, but by adding the ink blending and some splatters, that just makes them come to life really well. So what I'm thinking I might do is tuck one underneath the photo holder here. I know I've got an even number of floral elements. I've got six of these 
these cut out. Normally I would say do odd numbers, but for some reason when I was playing with this in design space, I was thinking that the six worked really well. And it's probably because I've staggered them a little bit. I've got a grouping of two here. I'm going to put another one in on this side and hopefully I can tuck it under here. Here we go. And then for these three, I'm going to have these staggered up from the bottom, I think. I might put this one underneath and then have another little one down at the bottom. I want varying heights, but I want them to be anchored by the base of the page. So I'm going to make sure that this one here is my tallest one, and then these two are going to be different heights on either side. And I'm really happy with how that's looking, but I do want to put a journal box here. So I'm going to do some stamping. So I'm just going to put this aside, flip my Versamat over, and I'm going to bring in this Check This Out stamp set. It's got some dies with it. You can see it's got a pocket, and then it's got these very cool stitched dies, and that fits this notebook style journal box. I did do a little play with it, and you can see the end result here. I've got the stitches on this, and I did it all in glacier ink, but when I put that on there, I just thought that it looked a little bit flat. So I'm going to re-stamp this, and I want to bring in some of the mocha because it's on the flowers here, and I think what I want to do is just change up what I've got stamped here. I'm going to bring in glacier ink for the actual note paper. I'm going to ink this up really well. And then I'm going to bring in the mocha to stamp Here's the Story. And that's on this set as well. So if you have this stamp set, check out all the little elements on here that you can fit into this ledger style grid that's going on. So I just need to line this up. And I love how the mocha is looking. And I might alternate some hearts going along here in Glacier and Honey Butter. I'm just going to open both of those. And I think I'll start with Honey Butter next to this. And it looks quite cute. And then I'm going to bring in Glacier and then I'm going to do another honey butter one. And then I think I'll put a Glacier one down in this bottom corner here. And then I just need to die cut this out and attach everything to my page. I've got all these elements adhered down onto the page. I'm just going to bring this up so you can see this little journal box. I think it's a really cute addition to this layout. Pardon the pun, I know it says 100% cute. I was going to mat it in the glacier to match this, but I quite like how it's just a standalone piece without the matting on there. And the little touch of mocha ink just brings in the centres of these cone daisies here. Now I've got these ones hanging off the edge, so I just need to flip this over and get my scissors and cut through these quite easily. I've got the edge of the paper. I'm going slowly because some of these elements are three pieces when it comes to the actual floral part of it, not so much the stems. I'm just gonna trim those off so they're nice and flat to the page. And I quite like when things come off the edge of a layout like this. And I do have this zip strip left over. So I'm thinking that might look rather sweet at the bottom of this photo element here. And then I'm going to trim it to put at the bottom of this one. So I'm just going to bring in my trimmer. A lot of the times this is why I do my photo mats at the true size. Because then when it comes to putting these little decorative pieces on there, I know that I can trim these down and that they're going to fit perfectly at the bottom edge of my photo. All that's left to do really is a couple of little dots and I'm thinking I might use some clear sparkles on this. I think they'll be a nice touch with these elements that I've added. Oh, don't put it upside down. With the elements that I've added with the splattering to the actual floral elements here. So I'm just going to bring out my clear ones that I've got all sorted out here. I might use a selection of the clear and the bitty ones as well. This photo storage box is still available to purchase. When I last looked it was, and I think it's on clearance special too. So it's sort of the last few days that you can order from my website and a lot of clearance items have been added to the list. So make sure you go and check it out. You might find something that you've been wanting and something that you might have had your eye on for some time but might now be on special. So what I'm going to do with these is just put a few of these around. I'm going to mix up the clear with the bitty sparkles. I'm going to start with the largest ones first and just put those in certain places around here. And then I'm going to bring in the bitty ones and add a few more of those. I think I might add another little grouping. Not so much here. Maybe, maybe I'll do it here. 
sometimes it's a lot easier just to slide them off the carrier sheet than it is to try and pick them up. And Jill Broadbent showed how to do this on, I think it was on an album retreat or it just might have been a launch day where she ran through the actual scrapbook layouts. And this is just so easy. Sometimes, especially with these little ones, I go to try and pick them off the carrier sheet and they scooch all over the desk and I can never find them again. So this is just a little bit of a time saver and I can pretty much get them exactly where I want them to go by sliding them off. So thanks Jill for that tip. I really appreciate it. It's made life a lot easier and I'm not chasing bitty sparkles that go flying off over my desk that are never to be found again, to be honest. So here we go with the final double page spread. This was a pretty quick page to put together. The Honey Bunny digital cuts for this cone flower. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite floral element, I think, when it comes to adding a bit of pretty to a page. So this might be a bit of a tried and true pattern that you may have seen before, but being able to flip the pattern over to edge everything off beautifully, it just works really well. And I think it would have made it too heavy on this side of the page to do another strip of this butterfly print on either side here. I quite like how it's just open-ended and it also means that without this pattern underneath here, this has got room to breathe and to really shine. I'm a little bit obsessed with this yellow dot paper from the Honey Bunny collection. It really is pretty and it's fresh. And if you wanted to make this into a more masculine layout, you could use this side, bring in some wood strips on the edges and do some different icons on here. And that would give this a totally different look. And saying that out loud now, I think I'm gonna create some kits for the ladies with some papers from the good life that I've got left over with the wood grain and make it into a more masculine layout. I won't go through the whole process of putting that together on YouTube here but I'll probably post it on my Facebook page and on Instagram as well when I get around to doing that. As always thank you so much for tuning in. Happy crafting and bye for now.